I ended up getting interested in birds from a really, really young age, especially in birds of Algonquin Park. I grew up in Dwight just outside the park from, I think my parents moved there when I was three. Spent all kinds of time in the park looking at birds, especially with my dad, who is park naturalist here for 25 years. So we spent all kinds of time, not only looking for rare birds, but studying the behavior of common birds and when they come back from migration and where they nest and all that kind of stuff. So I just sort of got sucked into it at an early age and got hooked on it. Well, the sapsucker just came in up here. You can just hear it calling there now. I'm really sensitive to barred owl hooting. That's the hooting I'm doing there, the who cooks for you, who cooks for you all. When I was really, really young, I helped Dan Strickland with his research on gray jays here in the park. Helping him with with that really was one of the things that got me interested in birds in the first place because gray jays are so fascinating and so different from a lot of the other birds we have here. Because they store all the food that they pretty well will need during the winter. Therefore they don't have to rely on sort of natural food in the environment to be available at that time to feed young. Sure sign of of spring in Algonquin is when male spruce grouse start to display to catch the attention of females. And when they do this, they, they do these flutter flights where they go up sort of halfway up into a black spruce and they come back down to the ground, they make this noise. Spring is such a, a great time of year in hardwood forest. The leaves on the trees are just starting to pop open. Down on the forest floor, there's this huge, dense mat of spring ephemeral wildflowers. So you've got things like trout lily, spring beauty, red trillium, and that's the only time of year that those flowers are in bloom. When he was in grade school, he would come home and both my wife and I would still be at work and he would spend a lot of time searching for nests on our property at Dwight. Obviously he took to this sort of activity at a very early age and became proficient at finding birds' nests, which of course he went on to utilize in his research. Almost all birds' nests that you get a look at are immaculately clean um, in the nestling stage. And there's a couple of different ways that birds make that happen. One of the most common is that as soon as one of the youngsters is ready to go, so to speak, the adult comes in and removes the fecal sac. That keeps the nest clean, there's no scent there, it doesn't attract predators, that sort of thing. Here, for example, you see a male black-throated blue warbler coming into a nest, moving a fecal sac, and that's good. Dad contributes to uh, house cleaning just as much as mom does. It's always uh, really impressive just how much food they can bring in one food load. And they come in with these, you know, these insect legs sticking out of the bill this way and that, and it's amazing that they can jam that much food in there. I mean, sapsuckers are fairly large birds as sort of the size of birds go, so it's still impressive, but it's even more impressive when a bird that's much smaller than a sapsucker, uh, like a blue-headed vireo, for example, brings this huge, massive load of insects.
So there's quite a bit of variation as to how advanced the development of a young bird is when it actually fledges from the nest. Here you see an American red start fledgling. It's less than 24 hours out of the nest and it's just a wee little fluff ball uh, with its parents feeding it. And they've moved it into some really thick vegetation to hide it from predators. I think that's the biggest draw to studying birds is that you can be birding all the time. There's no time or place where you can't be looking at birds. There's no season, there's really no down season. There's always something interesting happening even in the dead of winter. Yep, a juvenile sapsucker has just come into the well. When the hummingbird comes in, it sort of mildly chases it away. It seems like this juvenile hasn't really learned yet that it should be maybe chasing that hummingbird away because the hummingbird's stealing some of its sap. If the adult was here, it would probably be much more aggressive towards that hummingbird. Because you can see right now, they're both feeding at the same time. The hummingbird just left, and it's just gone over and perched in a tree nearby, and it'll probably sit there and wait for its opportunity to come back. <laughs> 